Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the podcast. Today, we are discussing exactly why Visa, MasterCard, American Express, etc. cannot build a network to do what Flexa does the way Flexa does it. There, there's a lot of discussion about this on the uh, on the AMP Reddit. Uh, a lot of conjecture. I thought we could maybe put this to bed a bit, and if nothing else, add uh, a a little bit of original thought to the discussion. I I will end this video with a caveat that they theoretically could do it, but why they won't do it. And you know what? I get that these deeper videos don't do well for the channel at all, and and that's fine. I just like to put the uh, put the information out and be part of the discussion. Uh, amp to the moon, diamond hands, diamond hands. There we go. <laughs> there we go. I like to play devil's advocate sometimes. Uh, this is one of those times. We're going educational today, and I said in another video that I will keep talking about amp. As long as I can keep adding original thought to the videos, this one is definitely original thought. I also like to make videos that I find interesting, and I definitely find this one interesting. Flexa is a gold-backed network. Getting into the why of it today, please stand by. This is not a thrilling video. It, it, it's not that one, man. It, it's an informational video, not inspirational. I can do inspirational, but you know what? I, I don't want to. It, it feels like I'm selling out, and that was that's was never the intent of the podcasts. The more I look at AMP, the more I see that they are doing what used to be done, what used to work in an economy that worked in an economy that was managed by the people participating in it, not a central anything. It built society. It wasn't the result of society. There is absolutely no chicken or the egg uh, debate here. Now, before I really drill down into this one, and it, it does need drilling, we have to discuss fractional reserve banking. I know how thrilling that is, and I can literally hear folks just clicking off from this video right now, but please indulge me. I am talking about your investment. Fractional reserve banking is the most common form of banking being practiced by commercial banks all over the world. This is not a USA thing. This is a worldwide bank thing. Fractional banking, in a nutshell, is the ability of an issuing bank to loan more money to the public than it holds in reserve. Way back in the day, long time ago, they, they used to issue gold notes. You would deposit your gold, your silver, your precious metal into a depository. They would give you a note for the amount deposited, and you could trade the note. This was the original gold-backed currency, one-for-one one ratio. And it worked wonderfully until, there's always an until in there, this worked wonderfully until banks figured out that they could literally issue more notes than they had gold in reserve because the odds of every note holder calling them in at the same time was very small. This was the birth of fractional banking, and it still applies today. By law, today, Issuing banks only need to hold a fraction, fraction of the debt that they issue, a fraction of the reserves. Now, in for legacy pay rails, this, this is not a problem. They can issue debt up to their fractional requirements, and these requirements can be changed by the central bank at any time. They are manipulated constantly as a way of spurring spending. Decrease the ratio to increase spending, easy credit. Increase the ratio to control inflation, higher standards of credit. It is a manipulated economy, similar to what is seen in, uh, you know, at every country around the world. 
this sort of matters to you as an investor in Flexa because you are the bank. But you're operating with, uh, with handcuffs on. You cannot participate in fractional banking. Crypto doesn't work that way. Crypto exists on a one-for-one -one ratio, period. Before you can collateralize a purchase, you have to maintain an exact reserve value for the collateral. That's why Flexa posts their numbers. It's right up there. The thing that makes Flexa very unique, uh, as in never done, is the nature of it as a gold-backed digital network. When a transaction occurs on the Flexa network, Flexa guarantees the transaction as an effective loan to the merchant. $7 spent at Dunkin' Donuts, Flexa buys the debt note from the merchant on a one-for-one -one ratio. Merchant pays Flexa 0.5% for the guarantee of payment. Flexa recovers the debt from the issuing bank. It operates, Flexa operates as a bank in that it pays the merchant, and it operates as a pay rail in that it recovers the debt after the fact. Any debt, credit card, crypto, banknotes, it doesn't matter. It can collateralize anything. Flexa is not loaning money. It is buying debt, and it is backing it on a one-for-one -one basis, dollar for dollar. And, you know, I know this is getting away from me, and please hang on. I promise I'm getting to it. Legacy pay rails aren't doing this. They are facilitating payments. They are not guaranteeing payments. They're middlemen. All they do is transfer the debt from the merchant who offered it at the point of sale to the issuing bank who allowed said buyer to have credit. Visa, MasterCard, Amex, etc. They do not take the debt on themselves and they don't guarantee payment to the merchant. They just move the note from A to B and they get paid 3% for it. If the issuing bank honors the transaction, the merchant gets paid. If the issuing bank does not honor the transaction, the merchant eats it. And that's it. We can dig down into the minutia of debt recovery and such. I'm not going to do it here as it's not the point of this video. But I wanted to give some background on the way these pay rails work so you can make an informed decision. This is your money we're talking about. So to the original point of the video, why can't Visa just do what Flexa is doing? Because if they do what Flexa is doing, they are now the bank. They cannot participate in fractional reserve lending. If they established an alternate pay rail, which guarantees the purchase the way Flexa does, they would have to maintain a one-for-one -one ratio of collateral the way Flexa does. They are no longer facilitators of payments. They are now the bank for the payments. And considering the sheer volume they process in the trillions, they would have to hold that much in reserve. As their network grows, as spending increases, they would have to increase their reserves exactly the way Flexa does. And every bit of bad debt that is issued on their network, every time there's fraud, Visa themselves would have to eat it. Not the issuing bank and not the merchant because they are the issuing bank and they don't have a mechanism in place to recover the debt like Flexa does. Hypothecation, sell the collateral on the open market. You can't do that with dollars because nobody is going to buy one for one on bad debt. And just so you know, I did my research for the granddaddy of why legacy systems can't do what Flexa does the way Flexa does it, they have a patent. Cryptocurrency Acceptance System, assigned to Flexa Network Incorporated, 2019, November 26th, application US 16-694-459. But 
considering that legacy pay rails are just a fountain of innovation and development, maybe they can find a workaround. I'm just not seeing it. I I, I don't see how they <laughs> I don't see how they could, man. So I hope this puts some of the conjecture to rest. Maybe. The only way Flexa can work is exactly the way it does work, and they have a patent. In order for legacy systems to try and get in on the act is to buy Flexa. And why would they? They aren't a threat yet. Now, what happens 10 years from now? Anyone's guess, and I won't speculate. But even if the worst should happen, and they do decide to buy Flexa, your investment is still safe because the whole thing does not work without AMP. Flexa is not a product designed to integrate into the traditional space. It is a product designed to take over the traditional space. A better way of doing business. And this, for precisely this reason... I love crypto and the innovation it allows. You cannot do what they're doing without crypto. I'm just saying. Uh, live stream on Thursday, 7 Central. Cheers.